Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> Like as in going forward with Maze Treatments episode two. Dun, 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 dun. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Today we have a very special episode. After a hiatus, we are going to be resuming Maze Treatments today. We got a Horn Knights unscripted battling it out today. Check out, check them out. Link will be in the description. Uh, we have Lost TV versus SoCal Exploring. Uh, they are going to be bringing two fantastic mazes today. Uh, first up for Lost TV, um, we have Adrian bringing us a uh, scream, and then we will be looking at SoCal Exploring bringing us uh, Hollywood Harry versus uh, Sweet Licks. Hopefully, I got that right. Not bad. Um, I'll give that to uh, you. And, that was good. And then uh, we are going to uh, watch those videos, judge them on and up, give our feedback, and uh, we're going to pick our winner. As always, we have uh, the wonderful uh, enthusiast for physical media, Logan. Logan. And all things haunt and Halloween. And uh, we got this douchebag named Tony, uh, you know, making <laughs> us uh, all come together for this video. He's still mad at me. We had a little conversation prior. A little mad at me. He's a little heated. It's okay. I still love him. Uh, he probably doesn't. I still know what to say. He probably doesn't love me back, but I still love him. What's love got to do? Got to do with it. Yep. He What's love? He don't know. He don't know. I I I'd take a bullet for him, but you know. Uh, I would take a a crisp pie five for you. That's that's our that's our friendship. I've proven my I've proven my. Uh, You've proven your loyalty. Myself. You've proven your I've loyalty. proven my loyalty before. You have. Um, no, Maze Treatments is back. I am excited. Uh, we got the three three judges here. Uh, the scream. One through four versus Sweet Licks versus Hollyweed, Holly, Holly, Hollyweed, Hollyweed Harry, <laughs> Hollyweed Harry. Um, no, Hollywood Harry versus Sweet Licks. If you guys don't know, uh, two originals that came out of Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood um, slash Sweet Licks uh, Clowns 3D and Hollywood Harry Eli Roth Terror Tram uh, came back for two years, not back to back, but two different years. Uh, so I'm excited to see what these treatments are, man. I'm excited to see uh, the scream and see what he's got to bring to that to the table because I know that's been a, a fan favorite that wanted that should be coming to the event. Um, I know people have been wanting scream. Uh, I am one. Of and those we've people. almost had it before. We've had it in 2011 as a terror tram, and that was it. Yeah. Terror but we almost had it as a maze, right? We almost had it as a maze, and I think they scrapped it last minute. We scrapped it last second. So. That, one of the OG slashers. Yeah, uh, or one of the actually one of the the leading frontmen in the '90s slashers, uh, when when slashers were getting that revival again in the '90s, and uh, Mr. Wes Craven was like, "I got something to bring to the table." I I created one amazing slasher. I got slasher. something to say. Yep, killed the baby today. Um, anyway, Wes Craven, uh, he's gonna you know, iconic director, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, other. Amazing films, uh, Scream and Nightmare on Elm Street probably are his staple films that people really know him for. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at Adrian's maze treatment for Scream. I'm excited to see what this is, and I'm excited to see uh, if this can uh, work at Halloween Horror Night. So let us. Uh, oh, before we start this, here's the bracket right here. So um, if you guys can look, Tormented's out. They. Uh, he dropped out uh, for personal reasons, and so he contacted me and let me know about that. So Tormented is out. Connor advances to the next round. So that, congrats on Connor. And Hotline is currently uh, in round two. So who's going to take the next round two for Scott versus Lush? Who do we got? Anybody? Early predictions. I'm gonna take the world on this one. I think I think Scott Pilgrim's gonna lose this episode. <laughs> I'm gonna take the world. I thought I thought okay. I thought that was gonna go a whole different way. I thought you said he was gonna win it, but you just went lose. <laughs> wow. That's a uh, Sammy. Show your support for Scott. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I had to make a Scott Pilgrim joke. Scott Pilgrim. 
Uh, now we'll find out who wins. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Adrian's maze treatment for Scream 1 through 4. Hey guys, what is up? Adrian here from Launch TV. I just want to say a huge thank you to the Knights of Horror for having me on. I'm excited to be taking on my Horror Knights unscripted co-host. Best of luck to you, my friend. I think you're going to do phenomenal. But let's get into this Scream breakdown. Here's my best. <laughs> Let's start with the facade. So I put this house in a soundstage, not just any soundstage. I put it in soundstage 25. Now soundstage 25 is where they held The Walking Dead and where they held Poltergeist. The Walking Dead facade was huge. And I mean, they had Terminus outside, they had scares outside, everything. So what I wanted to do for Scream was, I wanted to take the facade of the Rialto Theater from Scream 2 and make that my facade, basically telling you that you're going to get a sneak preview of the movie Stab, and you're going to walk into the movie theater. As you enter the movie theater facade, you're going to walk straight into the actual theater, where you smell the popcorn, you smell the cotton candy, you smell everything around you, and you know you're walking into a showing of Stab. But it's not just a screen that's in front of you. To your left and your right, there's a movie the rows of movie theater seats, and you're walking straight down the middle aisle, and you have dummies and actual actors sitting there. They're all wearing the ghost face mask, and you don't know who is who. So you have the scare actors and the dummies. So basically, they're going to play with you. You're not going to know what's what, and it's going to scare the living daylights out of you. Now you're just going to walk straight through that screen right in front of you and you're going to get into the very first scene from Scream. You're going to hear the phone ringing. And then Drew Barrymore's character is going to pick up the phone. And you're going to hear Ghostface's voice. He's going to be like, what's your favorite scary movie? Sorry, I can't do any like voice acting. But anyways... You're going to hear his voice constantly echoing with different sayings that he does throughout this scene. He's going to ask her, who was the killer in Friday the 13th? And then she's going to yell, Jason! And then he's going to be like, wrong! She's like, I've seen that movie a million times! Anyways, I don't want to go too much into it, but that first room, you're going to walk out, you're going to walk through the kitchen. As you're exiting the kitchen, you're gonna walk into Casey's backyard. Casey's Drew Barrymore's character, by the way. Her backyard, where you're gonna see her hanging by her intestines. And you're gonna see a ghost face come out to try to scare you. Then we're gonna go to the next room. In the next room, you enter the garage, where you'll see Tatum's body stuck above you. Tatum's Sydney's best friend, you know. And there's gonna be a ghost face just chilling there, ready to spook you. Next, you're going to walk past the dangling body of uh, Tatum, straight into the bathroom from the movie theater, where you're going to see two ghost face waiting in the stalls. They're going to wait for you. They're going to come out and get you, no matter what you do. Then up next, I have my money shot room, if that's what you want to call this. So, in Scream 2, Sydney's auditioning to be in the play Agamemnon. Well, not auditioning. I believe she's just rehearsing. But... There are multiple characters here that have different faces. And then you'll see Sydney rehearsing. She'll come out, she'll be singing, and then multiple ghost faces will appear amongst the cast, coming out at you, trying to scare you, trying to get you off guard. Then it continues. We leave the money shot room and we go to the next scene. The next scene is you're gonna walk straight up to an exact replica of Sydney's house, but it's from stab three. And then you walk inside, and Sydney's getting attacked by Ghostface. So you don't know what to do. But instead of continuing and following Sydney, you make a churn, and you end up right in downtown Woodsboro, 
where they're celebrating Ghostface for some reason, and they have Ghostfaces hung up everywhere. I mean, everywhere you look, there's Ghostfaces. That's you walking into Scream 4. Here we will walk into Olivia Morris's house, who is Cindy's niece's friend. Her neighbor, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. You're gonna see her killed. You're gonna see her kill, which is probably the most bloodiest kill from this film. So I see them using water effects, and I see them stabbing and blood. Next, we're gonna get into another facade, another mini facade, where you're gonna walk into a stabathon, where again, like in the first scene of the house, everyone's gonna be dressed like Ghostface. It's gonna be a mannequin room where they have a screen projection of stab, and all those characters are just gonna be in there waiting for you. And now, the final room and the final scare. So the final room, I really wanted to pick something that would hold the franchise, but I felt like it was more respectable to pick the scene with Jill, her niece, Sydney's niece, and Sydney fighting until you hear clear. Now, right when you hear clear, the whole room just goes white, right? And you're walking, because the small transitions in room, so it's white, and then you're walking. As soon as the room turns white, the phone rings. The strobe starts. It's a dark hallway. The strobe starts, and you're going towards the exit. As soon as you exit, two ghost face right there, ready for the prowl. Yeah. And I think that does it for... No. The password slash handler. So, in Hollywood, they have a handler that stays outside, and you tell him something, and he gives you something. So to me, I feel like the perfect password holder slash handler would be Randy. And if you're wondering who Randy is, Randy is the know-it-all horror fan. Basically, the guy that says, everyone is a suspect. So, the passwords are going to be different horror titles. And he's going to be giving you a postcard that has that movie on it. But it's blood splattered. So basically... You're getting the more the, the horror movie poster that you knew straight to you. So Friday the 13th, Man Around Elm Street, Halloween, anything like that. With all that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed my maze treatment. It was a lot of fun putting this together for you guys. I hope you guys at the Knights of Horror enjoy this. Please do me a huge favor. Check out Lost TV if you guys haven't done so already. Like I said earlier, listen to the... Horror Nights Unscripted Podcast, even though me and Scott are going against each other today, we love each other, and we're just in it for the fun. So, let me know what you guys think. I want to know. Say excellent, my dudes. All right. So that was Lost TV's uh, maze treatment for Scream 1 through 4. And uh, I know prior to this maze treatment, I think we all kind of were on edge as to how this was going to work. Especially, I know Sammy a little had a little bit of questions of how this was going to work as far as how is he going to fit four films into one maze. I mean, it's better to do one film at a time. And as we all do agree, that is the, the best way to go. Adrian made it work. He made it work really well. Um, from when he was talking, you know, having the facade start at the movie theater from Scream 2. And then, you know, you start from, you know, you're pretty much going into like the, the screen and going into the movies that our scream in a way is kind of like how I got the feeling from that. Um, and I think he uses a lot of the dummy scares too, which I think is a, a smart move too. Cause it really throws people off guard. So, uh, from when he does scream one to scream two to scream three, uh, I know scream three is not really a fan favorite, but still including it in there as far as some of the best moments of scream three and then going into scream four and then kind of ending it with that like final scare all the way up to like the guy who Randy who's holding the Twitter password I think is the perfect choice for that maze um, especially with him being I think all the way up until screen two or three um, which I think was a, a perfect person to actually put outside uh, for the, the Twitter password uh, what are your guys thoughts on this man I, I really I really enjoyed this I liked it a lot go ahead Sammy yeah definitely I agree that I enjoyed it a lot um, some of the real good parts is obviously that, that intro the, with the facade going into that intro room. Yeah. Really awesome. Um, you know, 
I think that's one thing a lot of people miss is the smells um, that encompassed uh, Horn Nights for a good while. Yeah. Um, you know, to to get all five all five of your senses really tingling in a maze. Because um, if you can use all five, I think that really makes a big difference. Um, uh, or well, at least four of them. I don't think you can really use taste now that I think about it. But uh, yeah. <laughs> you can taste, yeah, taste, the, taste the costumes. Taste the costumes. Yeah, just <laughs> you look, look, scary, look, look, just... Uh, look ghost face. You know what I mean? <laughs> just look ghost mm, face's that's ex- mask. Yeah, that tastes like ghost face. <laughs> tastes like plastic. <laughs> Got it right. He's <laughs> like... Cheap Halloween mask. The guy God. just fucking breaks character like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Bro, you need to leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought that was really good, though. Um, I'm always a fan of the dummies. Um, my, my one one of the critiques was I think he used that, that, that scare tactic a little bit more than I would have liked. Yeah. I only like it maybe once in a maze. Um, because I wanted different scares happening throughout the maze. Right. So you can get more different people scared. Um and so I liked it in the beginning, especially. Um, and then I really liked how his like base kind of exited uh, out into like you know with those flashes and things like that. That was really cool. Um, and the idea of you entering into like the stab universe as well, so that you're encompassing both the screen films and the the film inside the film that is stab. Right. Logan, thoughts? Yeah. Absolutely, man. Um, so this has been a long. Uh, this has been a long awaited maze. Uh, fans have been wanting a scream maze for years. Of course it got turd tram at least once and maybe twice if I'm not mistaken. I know is that I know it's been at Orlando's event, I think, once. Okay, yeah, I know we in Hollywood have had it at Terror Tram at least a couple times, I think. Yeah, I know uh, one of. I, the first year I went twenty eleven, so yeah, I think I wanna say I could be wrong. Was it twenty fifteen they might have also had? Uh, no. No, it wasn't Nothing in twenty fifteen. Uh, I just remember, uh, I remember walking uh, through the back lot and towards the end, there was a tram uh, with a bunch of ghost faces sitting in the tram. And then like one that was like the, they had the dummies and one would pop out and scare you. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was probably 2011 then. Um, but anyways, um, that was a great pick for Losh. And I think he really did it justice. Uh, that facade is just an amazing idea. Uh, amazing idea. Uh, that first room with the dummies, I think, is super strong. That money shot room, though, uh, with uh, the with that play with uh, you know. The, oh the, yeah, that is that's money right there. That's that, beautiful. Yeah, I, I was sold as soon as I saw that. Yeah. Um, I, I really want this now. Um, I really hope someone like John Murray is watching these maze treatments just to get ideas for the future because man. Yeah got some he's got some good stuff that could potentially make great mazes right. uh socal tv i believe is up next that's gonna be really hard to beat uh, so i'm excited to see what he's got for us socal exploring man he is up next hollywood harry versus sweet licks um so let's see where that takes us man i mean you have a big big footstep to uh to take now that uh <laughs> after seeing that maze treatment man um, I think what really also sold Adrian's, if I may add to, was of course he actually made a custom trailer for this, like yeah. an announcement trailer, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, um, it really helps. Yeah. Uh, sell your pitch. So really uh, helps bring that hype. Yeah, if it, you know anybody watching this that's uh, going to be up next in a couple of treatment videos, uh, make us a video or something just to give us a visual. It really helps sell. Yeah. Uh, pictures uh, to reference your scenes if you're doing a if you're doing a movie if you're doing an original maybe take uh, if it's been done in the past maybe take little slides from before and what you want to include um, that really helps sell the pitch even more um, I think that's why Adrian and uh, and uh, Hotline have done so well with their pitches because we've gotten a visual of how they want their maze to be done. And I really think that's a that really boosts that really gets me thinking like oh fuck that scene can work after seeing it so. All right, SoCal, let's see what you got next, man. I'm excited to see what's on the table for SoCal Exploring. Let's roll that clip. All right, what's up, the Knights of Horror crew? We're back here for Maze Treatments, and I'm excited for this one, taking on my better half, Adrian from Lost TV. Good luck to you, buddy. I'm sure we'll find out the, the answer of who won after this, but good luck to you. Let's get into uh, 
my thing. Hollywood Harry versus Sweet Licks the Clown is my maze idea. And let me tell you guys a little bit about what I think would be placed in this maze if it were to come true. You're going to notice me looking down a lot and that's because I got a lot of stuff written down to be prepared for this maze treatment. Alright, so we first start off with the facade and the facade will dive deeper into the storyline of Hollywood Harry's Dread Time Stories where we see a large scale comic book type of facade sil similar to something that we saw from Creepshow in 2019 but a little bit smaller in scale. The facade will have a graphic of Hollywood Harry taking over Halloween Horror Nights as a whole as he sits up on top of his throne created out of studio tour tram parts. And of course since you guys know Hollywood Harry was home was actually the terror tram for a very long time. Behind Harry we can see Sweet Licks with a sinister grin backed up with who used to be Harry's sidekicks who are now Sweet Licks's which are the naughty bad doggies with big saws in their hands. The text on the facade reads Hollywood Harry the superior clown king of Halloween Horror Nights. Sweet Licks the Clown has fooled the dreaded dogs into taking his side by filling them and giving them all the ice cream that they desire. But what the characters don't know is that ice cream is actually mixed with human flesh. Surrounding the facade is both a Sweet Licks ice cream truck and a crushed studio tour tram cart. The maze is located in the Revenge of the Mummy extended queue location and the Sweet Licks truck has a decaying figure of Slash in the front seat, in the front seat kind of like an easter egg to Clowns 3D as it is crashed into the side of the comic book facade. And one of the unique things about this is the guests will actually walk through the back of the Sweet Licks ice cream truck and kind of walk up a ramp transitioning into that comic book facade into the actual maze Hollywood Harry versus Sweet Looks of the Clown. I know that we never see anything like that but honestly it's maze treatment so you can uh, expect everything from this series. We move on into the Twitter password slash the actor outside which is none other than the naughty bad doggies and they'll be walking around the queue line handing out business cards with the graphic of Sweet Licks on the back and on the front of it will be the Sweet Licks ice cream company contact info with an interactive number that guests can call similar to stuff that we've seen in the past at different password mazes. When they call the number on the front of the card, it will take them to a pre-recording of Hollywood Harry's voice telling guests how he has taken over the event as a whole and everyone who steps foot inside should worship the clown. But shortly after, we hear a maniacal laugh from Sweet Licks himself stating the dialogue, not for long. The phone call then ends and this sets up the storyline perfectly mixed with the facade for the maze experience. Some of the passwords through the season could be stuff like licks, popsicle, freeze, big saws, naughty bad doggies, all that good stuff. Which we then transition into our very first room that we see in this maze. After making their way through the ice cream truck, guests are let into a freezer for their first room similar to the one we see in the first clown's maze. But this time we see a frozen body of Sweet Licks the Clown and Hollywood Harry marching around the room when audio cues are playing with Harry's dialogue saying welcome back to my dread time stories just when you thought they were over think again a slashing sound then plays as Harry slits the throat of a tram driver bodies of some of Sweet Licks's bodies some of Sweet Licks's family's bodies because as you guys know it was like the Sweet Licks family ice cream company so it was all his family members as scare actors in the actual clowns 3d maze his all those bodies are hanging frozen around the room with saran wrap and patterns of harry's animated face kind of just to add that nice little touch that hollywood harry is taking over there's a couple of different transition rooms that we see and one in specific that i want to dive a little bit more into which will set up how sweet looks comes back to life perfectly in one of the transition room which is the one right after the first room we see how sweet looks comes back to life this is where we see a neat effect happen in a maze where we see a machine with Sweet Licks's frozen body in the middle of it but instead of an actual scare actor it's a statue behind a piece of glass. We also see one of the dogs slam on one of the buttons on the machine which sprays tons of fog making the statue of frozen Sweet Licks completely vanish but instead when the fog stops a live scare actor of Sweet Licks jumps out from the side for one of the first jump scares of the maze. While he jumps out at guess the the dog also turns on his chainsaw to create a double jump scare. Now I don't really know how it would work with the dog turning on his chainsaw every single time. My guess is probably he wouldn't actually turn it on it just be an audio cue and he kind of be doing the motion. It looked kind of corny but also it's a funky maze so it would work out well in a maze. I mean guess what still gets scared more than anything with a blasting loud chainsaw sound and you know a, a giant headed dog coming after you. This scene resets every 10 seconds to play more into the storyline of how 
Lost Relix comes back to life. Throughout the maze, we see a couple of different unique transitions, including one of the ones where guests actually walk through Harry's mouth that looks as if he's screaming. The mouth has a very detailed look to it, and in this particular transition room, we see a classic jump scare in all battle mazes, where both Sweet Licks and Hollywood Harry jump out from both sides in the middle of their battle. And another transition room is a more simple one, where there are a couple of vibrant hallways, where there are posters of advertisements advertising the Sweet Licks Ice Cream Company. And here we see classic panel drop, uh, dr panel drop jump scares, with Sweet Licks' family members jumping out and scaring guests as they make their way down the hallway kind of giving it that feel of the classic clowns 3d and his family members coming back to life as well using that same machine scaring guests and you know tormenting not really tormenting guests but just really scaring guests we move on to the money shot room which honestly is is my favorite in the money shot room we see probably the biggest scene in the entire maze this is also a major easter egg to the terror tram experience as this room will be themed to the clowns on a plane story guests walk in and immediately see a map massive crash plane that takes up the entire room. However, the plane is completely frozen. The room's climate is also controlled similar to what we experienced in the Krampus maze. While in the room, it is pretty cold in there and there's wind blowing to symbolize that the plane is flying downwards to the crash site. And you may be wondering why exactly this matters. Well, that's because in this maze, there would be something that we never see in a typical HHN maze experience. The guests will actually be led through the actual plane as if they were experiencing the crash themselves it is really compact in there and there are clowns jumping out from everywhere hiding in the seats of the plane and even some of the crevices of the plane and these are the exact scare actors that we saw from the terror tram experience a couple years ago and the audio is compacted within the small plane at the small plane part because it's only going to be a part as you walk through it. you're obviously not going to walk through the entire plane and it's sweet look saying remember don't look down once guests step down from the plane, they can see the entire plane crash site, not up in flames, but like I said earlier, completely frozen, telling the story that Sweet Licks is the one responsible for the plane crash in an attempt to murder Hollywood Harry's minions who were aboard the plane. Kind of demonical, right? Kind of morbid as well, but it is a Halloween Horror Nights maze. Guests then turn the corner, but right before exiting the massive room, vibrant lights flash as a ginormous puppet head of Sweet Licks comes flying out of nowhere similar to the puppets that we saw in the poltergeist maze, but just imagine this head being three times the size. This head will require a total of four blackout scare actors just to control the pushing movement of it forward to score, scare the guest. And we get to the finale room, the scene that you see before you exit the maze. As guests enter the finale room, it is shaped as a circle with studio torch rams stacked up forming that circle shape. This finale scene in particular to the one that we saw in Origins The Curse of Calico at Not Scary Farm to get a perspective on how it's going to look. On top of the trams, we see our two antagonists, both Hollywood Harry and Sweet Licks as scare actors. They are both attached to a harness that lets them jump all the way across to the other side. We hear an audio cue play as they both lunge out at each other battling while at the same time below this impressive scene as guests are looking up at, at Hollywood Harry and Sweet Licks fighting, the naughty bad doggies are holding chainsaws and scaring guests as well as the dreaded clowns on a plane. But instead, the clowns on the plane, since you know they experienced a plane crash, um, they have bloody icicles coming from their nose and their head and different body parts that give, give it that kind of frozen, kind of demented look to these clowns these dreaded clowns on a plane that just experienced a plane crash but obviously they didn't die they just experienced tons of pain bloody pain slash frozen pain the coolest part about this scene is the fact that it uses the uv lighting effect so all the scare actors have some form of a uv part added to their costume or makeup and the room is also covered in ice cream galore which is also created with UV paint to not only signify the flavors of the different ice cream, but to also give a projection effect of all of it oozing down the side of the trams, showing that, hey, Sweet Licks is winning this battle, and he's taking over the superior clown king of Halloween Horror Nights. 
And the final scare for this maze hints back to the very beginning of the maze experience it was back to that frozen machine where we see Hollywood Harry frozen in a frozen statue and he just gets pushed out like a puppet at you. And it's a, it's a kind of clown like melody playing as it jumps out at you. One of the, you know, it's this very, very simple scare, but for a final scare, it's very, how do I say it, powerful especially when guests aren't experiencing it after they just went through that big finale scene. They have a frozen statue of Hollywood Harry jumping out at you, but in puppet form to kind of conclude the story of Hollywood Harry versus Sweet Licks of the Clown. But that was my mage stream, and thank you guys for having me on. Hopefully I advanced to round two, and good luck, Adrian. Um, I feel very very strong about this maze stream and we'll see what happens though i'm sure you guys will find out right after this so uh see you guys hopefully in round two hopefully if not then oh well you can see me on the socal exploring youtube channel all right so we just got done watching scott's treatment uh, i took a few notes and uh, i'll let the guys uh, go first though to see what their thoughts were because i have like really detailed notes so i mean uh logan why don't you go ahead and start what did you think of scott's uh sweet licks versus hollywood harry maze treatment yeah, that's a it, so um, anybody in these maze treatments that's doing non-IP uh, mazes, I think, has takes a lot of courage and a lot of creativity uh, because obviously you're you're creative when you're um, taking an IP and you know making it into a maze, but I think it takes even more creativity to be able to come up with an entire idea all on your own. Um, as you know, Hollywood Harry uh, has he he was an icon on the on the Terror Tram uh, a, a couple years ago. Uh, I believe it was the last time we had Terror Tram, as a matter of fact, isn't right. that? Uh, to be honest, right? Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we know from Clowns 3D in 2014, we have Mr. Sweetlix. Uh, I think it's a cool idea, an original concept featuring two uh, clowns from the event. Um, I love the money shot room. Uh, I think that was my favorite part was the money shot room. Uh, it's got a cool ending to it. I think. Uh, I think the way that he was describing it was... Uh, it really, uh, I, I, I could see what he, the way he was describing it, I, I could picture him taking me through all this, um, e even even without video or anything. Um, so that's that's good writing there, Scott. Um, I could totally see what he was going for. Um, but personally, um, I personally think it would have been cool, uh, even though I, I love Clowns 3D and I love Slash, of course, who did the, the, the music for Clowns 3D, uh, it would be really cool to to do a Hollywood Harry versus Jack the Clown, maybe eventually, kind of doing a similar thing, but East versus West. So we got uh, Hollywood Harry representing the West, and we got Jack the Clown representing the East, and the, and uh, we could have this maze that both uh, uh, Halloween Horror Nights and West, Halloween Horror Nights East. It'd be pretty cool. Um, but nonetheless, I think Scott did a great job uh, with, with what he came up with. Sammy, take it away, man. Sammy, did Logan say East versus West? I think he said the dose of both coasts. The dose of both coasts. I think he says, have you been entertained? Have you been entertained? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely agree with Logan over here uh, about how Scott really did, uh, you know, did a, a tough job here bringing a non-IP to life here, um, which is really, like, like like Logan said, it's kind of tough because you have to bring something that maybe people aren't 100% aware of um, and, you know, describe it. And so, Scott, kudos to you for writing a very good script and, uh, for this, uh, you know, taking this room by room. Um, I really loved the facade, actually. I was a real big fan of your facade, Scott. Uh, I thought it was really cool. Um, I like the location, uh, too, with the mummy uh, queue right there. That's always a good spot. Um, and so I enjoyed that. Uh, and, and I enjoyed the little details you went of trying to go back and forth between the two characters, uh, you know, with Sweet Licks and Hollywood Harry. Um, like, I really loved the broken tram thing in the beginning. That was really, like, a, a really good selling point to me. Um, and so kudos to you for, you know, really bringing this, um, bringing this to life and really you know, imagining different scares throughout. Tony, right. what do you have to say? So I got a lot of notes I took down uh, as to what he was talking about. First off, uh, nerd alert. Yeah, nerd alert, right? Um, <laughs> I got my I got my trusty, dusty video idea slash podcast book slash video book slash video book. I don't, I don't know. 
I don't know. I said video <laughs> book twice, so. Uh, composition book. Composition book. It's, uh, it's where I take all my notes, man. Don't judge. Uh, comic book facade. Uh, Kudos taking over HHN. Sweet Licks with Harry, uh, Harry's sidekicks is awesome. Um, I also very much did like uh, the Slash cameo. Um, where you see like a decayed version of him, and I think it was the either the ice cream truck or, or the tram. Either way, I thought that was really cool. Kind of nodding to Slash's years of, of the event, which is really cool, and him, you know, cool. helping do the music for the clowns. That was really cool. Uh, I really like the idea of walking into an ice cream truck. Um, I think if you if you execute that right, that could be really cool. Um, I know that'd be a hard thing to, to make, but I think if done right, it could be really cool. Um, and I imagine it'd be very tight space for everyone, but I, I think they'd figure out a way around that. Uh, the Twitter password with the naughty bad dogs, with uh, uh, you know Sweet Licks info, and then Hollywood Harry and him going at it over the phone. Uh, they did something similar to that at uh, when they did Insidious back in the day, where you got a Tucker and Specs card, and if you called the card, that you actually heard like a number. Uh, uh, you heard them talk, and. Uh, they gave you information about their about their uh, their services, which I think is cool. So hearing, you know, Hollywood Harry and Sweet Licks talk would be really cool. Um, and I'm a sucker for like the interactive stuff, so that that's really cool. Uh, that first room, of course, the uh, fr the freezer similar to Clowns 3D that you see uh, with Clowns 3D. Uh, Hollywood Harry, you know, faces off with uh, Sweet Licks and Hollywood Harry killing a tour guide. Uh, Harry. Uh, Killing like Sweet Licks' family, from what I've gotten out of that, I thought it was a really cool concept. Uh, I can imagine the temperature being really cold in there, like how they've done in the past, like he said with Krampus. Uh, they even done it in the past with this maze as well, uh, the the Clowns 3D. So I, I think that'd be a really uh, awesome thing to see, and kind of feeling that that climate would really put you into that situation. Uh, the transition rooms of Sweet Licks coming back to life, uh, statue effect of, of the jump scare, and of course uh, you have the dogs with the chainsaw scaring guests as they walk through Harry's mouth. Uh, you know, the jump scare of Harry and Sweet Licks jumping out in the middle between guests, panel drop scares. Uh, that's usually a typical one at HHN, uh, usually fan favorites. And one of my favorite ones, of course, is when they do the face-off while you're walking in between them. Uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman did it last year. Uh, most notably, though, you see it, you saw it in Freddy vs. Jason. You saw it in Alien vs. Predator. It's pretty much an iconic thing they do at uh, Horror Nights where you're walking through the middle and you have the two icons come at you, which I think is really cool. Um, panel drop scares, of course, another another thing that they use a lot at Horror Nights. Uh, they get you from a top. Uh, it, it shows you like a painting, and then they drop it. Someone jumps out. Very uh, very clever right there. Uh, one of my favorite scares. Money shot room. Now uh, I know everyone talked a little bit about this. The plane crash scene, uh, frozen. A simulated crash of a plane. Guess experience crash, and Sweet Licks is behind the crash to try to kill Hollywood Harry. Really shows how ruthless and uh, sinister uh, our um, Sweet Licks is to try to just kill one clown. I mean, I thought that was really bitching how they did that. And for something that, you know, guests are going to be able to experience a plane crash, that is something that is unique and new. I think the only time that you've experienced anything of a of a natural disaster was in uh, Rogue last year at Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. Of course, when you're walking say through, Queen Mary. Yeah, where, where you're walking through the ship and you're experiencing the Rogue Wave. Um, yeah. That That is definitely something that is is what what it is you know and uh, a giant puppet head of sweet licks which is uh, a very interesting um you know another scare i mean you saw in killer clowns from outer space with the uh um the clownzilla you saw in uh poltergeist like he brought up i mean you see you see that scare a lot uh which is a very big thing uh, the final room, of course, with the trams surrounding, and then you have Sweet Licks and Hollywood Harry, and then they, they're taking something from the cookbook. Obviously, uh, Sammy knows what that one is. Uh, you know, the harnesses of uh, them uh, fighting, which I think is really a, a thing that they can really start incorporating in Hollywood, uh, ho Hollywood Halloween Horror Nights. Um, and I think that'd be really cool to see that, uh, them facing off while you're getting scared on the, uh, you know, you have the dogs and, and, and Sweet Licks' family jumping out at you. Uh, you're distracted looking up, but then the scare comes at you from the bottom, which they did that in Origins. So very good uh, analysis there, Scott. I, I really uh, I got that one. Uh, and then the final scare, of course, Hollywood Harry uh, Frozen pushed out for a scare showing like Sweet Licks has pretty much won the fight. Uh, I think the only thing I would change with that is, is go with the Freddy vs. Jason um, approach with that. And that was, like, every night you went to the event, uh, it changed at the end whether Jason won the fight or Freddy won the fight. So I think to really please fans, depending on what night you went, uh, you know, you either show Hollywood Harry winning the fight or you show uh, Sweet Licks winning the fight. So I think that would be really cool and maybe change this from a statue to an actor. 
Uh, that way it simulates uh, who won that fight. So um, that that's what I would change. But overall, this guy, I think this gets uh, max points as far as uh, 40 points goes for me. I mean, he really went really detailed with this maze, and I was curious to see how this was going to work. Um, so, yeah, I think overall I'm going to give him uh, the max points possible. So here's the final verdict for me at least. Um, you had Lost TV who came down with uh, the Scream 1 through 4 maze, which was very well detailed and very well put together. And then you had Scott come down with the Sweet Licks versus Hollywood Harry maze, which was also very well detailed and very well put together. This was a very, very close uh, um, uh, battle between the two, honestly. This was probably the closest we've had in uh, you know, the, you know, maze treatments so far. Uh, and I think this is, this is, this is going to be my... Uh, judging here, but I think I gave him an extra point because they would have been tied. But I gave him this extra point because this is something we have not seen on maze treatments uh, since you know we started. I mean, and we're only we're only on episode two, so I'm hoping we get to see more of these as it goes on. But what really sold me for this pitch was he made a custom trailer for Halloween Horror Nights, and I'm a sucker for those trailers because those are the trailers that tell you really that uh they give you the hype as to you know what you're going to see in the maze and and just what's coming to the event what property so for me it's going to be Losh because simply uh he he was very visual on his pitch um and i think the 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 room much like i can i think logan and maybe sammy will agree with me on this one the room that sold me the most of course was the the theater scene where you know you had a bunch of the ghost faces uh dancing around with with city campbell which i thought was awesome but that extra point, uh, he had the 40, but that extra point was for making an HHN trailer. Going out of his way and making a trailer, that's just awesome. But I want to hear what you guys think. Final verdict. Um, for me, it's going to be Losh. Yeah, I'm going Losh as well. Um, Scott did a great job. It was so hard for, for me to choose between the two. But And I, I'm not even a big fan of, uh, of the freaking Scream. I mean, uh, they're fun movies. I, I, I dig the first one. Um, but that maze made me go I, after uh, watching his, his pitch, I went back and watched the first screen and I'm like, Oh man. Yeah. Like if, if a maze is going to make me rewatch a movie, like it's got my vote. Right. Uh, it, I could totally see the potential for it. Uh, I know he was doing all four movies. Um, the idea sat with me and, and, and I think it would be a cool idea if pulled off. Right. Uh, scream is long overdue uh, for a, for anything at HHN. I, I know it was on Terratram, but to, the fact that we this event has been going on for uh, what, almost two decades now, it, uh, uh, no, it's, it's been going on longer than that, uh, since the 90s, I believe, or 80s. Uh, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. But to, that we've had all these IPs and we haven't had a screen maze, uh, I, I think Losh did it justice in his pitch. And uh, if uh, Murdy's listening to this, like he just gave him a big idea. Right. So, um, Scott, great job. It was tough. Uh, Losh wins this, in my opinion, though. Sammy, what do you think? You're muted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speechless. I am. I'm speechless. <laughs> so I was, I was speechless. I was just mining my words. Um, but this one was really tough, like you guys both mentioned. Uh, you know, it's not like a super easy, clear-cut winner when it comes to these, um, especially this episode, I think. Right. Um, but... I think overall, because Losh, I think, you know, really did his homework, I think. I'm not saying that Scott didn't, because Scott wrote a very tremendous script. Yeah. Um, and really, you know, brought, without bringing pictures in, you know, really told a story. Um, but just the whole, I, I think, like, what really brought it down to me is I love Scott's facade, but I enjoyed uh, Adrian's facade just slightly more Right. Uh, with the theater. Um, and the fact that you, you begin by walking in and there's Ghostface sitting on there, dummies um, and actors, which is terrifying. You have the whole dance scene, which was so cool. Um, obviously, in the, in, the, in the film, it brings suspense. But then even more, I feel like it's going to bring more suspense is you actually have to live that out. Um, and, you know, I like, like uh, Logan said, it's, I think it's long overdue um, for to be getting a house and so yeah if you are listening marty um you know hit our boy up losh on the on the east coast because he's got some ideas for you right um yeah so i think that that's gonna be it i think uh thank you scott for playing uh but uh well adrian you get to move on to that next round next round so yeah thanks everybody for checking this episode out of uh, maze treatments let us know what you guys thought of these mazes in the 
comment section below uh, what you guys would like to see at the event. Um, and make sure to tune in next week because we got another fantastic uh, um, battle for Maze Treatments Round 1, which is uh, TLED Horrors Josue versus Eddie from Eddie Tainment, which he has Dude. still not told me what he's doing for Maze. <laughs> And it's so just, we're excited. So we're, we're excited. Mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, uh, thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in, and we hope you guys are enjoying the series, and we will see you guys next week. Peace.